and I was making good money as a lawyer and was going to leave that and do a startup. My co-founder, by the way, same situation. Uh, he was a fairly senior banker, was making good money as a banker. His wife was also a stay-at-home mom. He had four kids. And so, you know, we weren't two guys who were like 24, 25 and could sleep on someone's couch and eat macaroni and cheese and, you know, just kind of like, you know, bootstrap it. We were two middle-aged guys with families who depended on us and we were leaving behind reasonably well-paying jobs. So um, that was a unique experience because the... Uh, you know, we, we're like all in at that point, right? This is, this is, this is, um, you know, serious, you know, serious all in poker. And if this doesn't work out, you know, this is very problematic for our whole family uh, because we had no real, you know, backup plan there. So this was high stakes stuff for both of us. We both left our jobs, started in my basement. The first nine months were in my basement. We are, um, living off of um, credit card debt, basically, and, and a little bit of savings. So we go through almost all of that. Funny story, the day before I left my law firm, my wife and I both go online because, uh, you know, when you apply for a credit card, it's all about your you know, job as of that date and your income as of that mm-hmm. date. Sure. And we had a very good credit score at that time. Uh, that, by the way, didn't last long once I was not, you know, an entrepreneur. Um, and um, we each took out, I mean, I think we must have walked away with like $200,000 in, you know, borrowing capacity from our credit cards, right? Yeah. All of which we got like the night before I left my law firm because we knew that we would, you know, have to apply while I had that good salary, right? Um, and we use that, right? You know, we use a lot of that debt. Um, we used... You know, we had some real estate, some some uh, rental properties that we had gathered as we, we uh, moved around with the military. We sold off those to pay for things. So, I mean, this was high stakes, high stakes stuff. Yeah. Went a uh, about nine months with zero salary. Yeah. Right. This is living in Northern Virginia with, you know, kids in private school. So our burden rate is not low. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, uh, nine months without a salary. And then our first salary, when we raised our first little bit of venture capital, was just tiny. I mean, just a fraction of like what I made at the law firm or he made as a banker. And so, um, you know, this was high stakes stuff. This had to work. And we were not only risking, you know, our, you know, ourselves, uh, you know, but we, so that was a, uh, yeah, that, that was a scary few months. Not bad. Wow. <clears throat> So uh, when when you were when you were coming up with the idea of doing this particular business, uh, what compelled you to go in that direction? Or was there a, a particular kind of a light bulb moment for you that that you just decided you know you wanted to create Street Shares? Yeah. So my co-founder Mickey and I met um, through a mutual friend at church. So we both went to the same church, but like really hadn't hadn't met each other. And this mutual friend said, "You guys have to meet and talk." And so we met. At a Bob Evans. So for those the, mm-hmm. those who know Bob Evans, it's like a um, you know kind of a kind of a cheap diner, right? Like a Denny's, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. So we're at this at this Bob Evans here in Northern Virginia, and um, we just began to click. I mean, we just it, it, the 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 energy, the mental energy, and sort of like playing off each other was just so exciting. Right. And we arrived at this idea of affinity based lending. Mm-hmm. affinity based lending and what i mean by that is making a loan to a member of a of a group of a tribe in this case veterans mm-hmm. and the capital behind that loan comes from their fellow veterans and the theory was that the borrower would behave differently that is they would be um, extra careful to pay back the loan because if they defaulted on the loan they wouldn't be harming some distant monolithic bank, but they would be harming their fellow veterans investing their retirement in them. Mm-hmm. So we believed right. in this concept of affinity-based lending. And there's a bunch of sort of touch points for this, right? Or proof points. Mm-hmm. Um, a guy named Mohammed Yunus uh, started something called Grameen Bank that basically did this with like microloans in Africa and worked really well. Um, you know, if you think about like USAA, right? The insurance company. You know, they started with this idea of veterans insuring each other. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so a very similar sort of sort of concept. And we looked at different affinity groups to launch this with. Veterans were the obvious one, but but yeah, we looked at others. Um, and we decided to launch focused just on veterans. And then once we got into the market, we realized sort of how big the opportunity was. That is how much the need was that veterans were simply being underserved. And so, um, you know, that, that was sort of the origin of the initial concept. It obviously, you know, changed and sort of evolved over time. Uh, we benefited from a lot of people much smarter than us that we kind of ran the idea by. And a lot of folks began to shape this. Each new person that you add to your team, in particular in the early days, they're also going to shape the idea dramatically as well. So it's very important who you add. Uh, but the initial idea was, you know, went around affinity-based lending and serving this community of veterans uh, that was underserved. Oh, great, great. <clears throat> so other than what you're doing, have, is there another profession that you've sort of toyed with that you'd like to attempt at some point in life? That's a good question. I think when I took a like a survey or a study when I was uh, in college about um, you know you know what kind of jobs you'd be good at, mm -hmm. uh, I believe my results were um, CEO, so, so that's a good fit, mm -hmm. um, and forest ranger. I think was the other one, which is a job that I oh. think I would enjoy a great deal. <laughs> you know, I I, yeah. I I love the outdoors, spent a lot. Of the time hiking and climbing and such uh, but i think those were the two things that just my personality you know um sort of drove me to um i can tell you though i spent a lot of my my life early life at least as a lawyer uh generally i didn't enjoy that very much and i'm now doing what i feel like i was meant to do uh, i've given a talk before on this idea of being self-actualized at work and if you're familiar with the term self-actualization, right, it's the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And at the bottom are your basic needs like, you know, food and water and clothing and shelter. And then you go up to more advanced needs like, you know, love and belonging and friendship. And at the very, very top is this idea of self-actualization, right, which is basically like you're doing what you're meant to do. In the professional sense, I've only experienced that twice in my life. Once was one particular time when I was serving in Iraq and uh, just doing something that was just right down the fairway for what I was sort of wired to do. I was good at it. It was impactful. I felt like I was, you know, you know, changing the world. I mean, it was, it was just sort of like, you know, you know, perfect for me. Um, the other time is, is, you know, the last five years here at Street Chairs. So in 17 years since graduating from undergrad, I've experienced this thing maybe a total of six years. Um, and so, you know, there's always those sort of phases in life where we, we do what we have to do while we're trying to find the thing that we really, really want to do. Sure. And mine has been this sort of ongoing, you know, journey to discover that thing that I was meant to do. Um, and I think we're, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty much there now. I'm, I'm able to, mm -hmm. you know, make a good living doing something that I'm good at, but more importantly, helping a community that I authentically and, you know, genuinely care about. And I think that's a, uh, it's a very, very fortunate, situation to be in. Uh, and I wish for like, for, for all of your listeners that, that, you know, they can find that thing for them. Sure. Sure. And, and I totally, totally agree with you there because, you know, when, when we're doing, you know, it's like the saying goes, when you, when you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. And, right. and so it's, there, there, there's a lot of truth to that. And, and, you know, we're, we're endowed, you know, by, by our creator with gifts and talents. And when we're using those gifts and talents, then, you know, we're, we're more fulfilled in what we're doing. And so, you know, I, I really feel like it, it is something, you know, of a divine, divine nature, even that, that we should, you know, ultimately find that, that particular spot. So, you know, it's really good to hear that, that you're in that place. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think it's, it's, you know, um, everyone can find it if you find, you know, if you view it as sort of like a Venn diagram, you know, with sort of three circles and they all, all overlap in this one small point, uh, you know, at the center, you know, it, it's, you yeah. know, it's your passion, it's what you're good at and it's what the world needs, you know, and sort of where those three things intersect, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's bliss. So what would you say is your greatest character strength if you were to think about that? 
I guess I'm a, I'm a, I'm a true believer, right? Meaning if I set out on a mission or a plan, um, I really believe in it, you know, so I'm not cynical. I'm not, uh, inauthentic. I'm not, you know, jaded. Um, you know, I think life is short and I think, um, if you've been, you know, again, blessed to be born in this country, you've got a responsibility to do something with that, with that gift. Sure. And, um, you know, if, if, uh, if you find something that, you know, you believe is important, I think it's, uh, it's essential that you really believe it because if you're the leader and you don't believe it, no one else is going to, uh, in fact, you'll be tempted by others to be cynical or jaded or sarcastic or whatever. Um, but I think, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a true believer when it comes to a, you know, you know, to a goal or a mission. Mm-hmm. And on the flip side of that, <clears throat> what would you say is uh, maybe the greatest weakness that you struggle with? Yeah, I've got many. Um, I am, um, sort of ADHD, <laughs> right. <laughs> and then I kind of like jump around very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. which uh, in some ways can be helpful. I think as an entrepreneur, actually, it's not, it's not a terrible trait to have, but in life it can be hard, you know, because you might, you know, set a goal for something or set a, you know, um, you know, set a time or a deadline and not fall through on that because you're on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's a problem. Um, you know, actually have an assistant now and, you know, a lot of what she does is to like help me sort of stay on task and pick up the, you know, you know, the loose pieces that I leave behind a lot. And so I think that's certainly, that's cert, you know, you know, certainly a weakness. Um, I can be impatient, mm-hmm. uh, you know, which again, as an entrepreneur, there's a place for that, but it also can be very tough on your team. Yeah. And so I can be very, very impatient sometimes. And I think um, I can imagine in my head that something should be done now or done immediately or done a certain way. And, you know, my colleagues have a, you know, better, uh, but maybe slower way of doing it. Uh, and that can sort of cause, you know, you know, cause some tension. So I can be, I can be impatient and demanding. Yeah. yeah I can, I can re- relate with a lot of that. <clears throat> yeah. Personally, yeah. You know, the, the shiny objects and the squirrels and oh goodness. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. so tough. I mean, I have, you know, I, I tell my kids all the time that like the key to success is focus, mm-hmm. right? It's not passion. Uh, because people can be passionate about the wrong thing, <laughs> right? right. Um, it's to take all the energy and intelligence and ideas and creativity that you have and apply that to the smallest, narrowest point. Like that's how you actually change the world, right? Mm-hmm. Um, right. Applied focus over a period of time, right? That's, that's just, that's, mm-hmm. that's physics, right? That's force. And, um, uh, you know, as much as I say that, it's something that I myself, you know, struggle with. So uh, that can be difficult. And my, and my teenage kids will often remind me of that. <laughs> of course they do. <clears throat> so uh, is there a particular place you go to uh, for your brainstorming uh, to, to gather your ideas? You know, some people go to nature for that or, you know, a particular place. Uh, how about you? Yeah. When I was living in Colorado, I did a lot of alpine climbing, mountaineering, mm-hmm. time in the mountains. I just, I just love being in the mountains. Um, here now on the East coast, uh, I run a lot and I find that to be very sort of freeing for my mind. Um, usually while I run, I'll do like books on tape and that kind of thing and sort of feed, you know, sure. you know, you know, feed my mind during that time. Um, most of my ideas though, have come from the shower. Oh, and okay. I, th- I, and I think it's something about like hot water on your neck, opening up capillaries uh, there you know, I think there's, there's probably some sort of scientific reason for it, but it's, um, when I'm in the shower and relaxed and it's a hot shower, I just, uh, I'm like, you know, just ideas left and right. And so that's sort of my, okay. you know, that's my go-to if I'm, if I'm struggling with, with a problem, for example, or I've got writer's block or, or I'm at, at an impasse or something like that. Uh, usually a nice hot shower will sort of get the ideas flowing. Oh, good deal. <clears throat> So if you were to describe uh, at a very high level, uh, the process behind what your, your, your daily uh, routine looks like, you know, for someone maybe wanting to start a business and trying to, to maybe get some, some insight as to, you know, the CEO life and what that looks like. How would you describe that? 
Yeah. So first,